Metal Ark employees are going to be in Tribeca next week doing important ceremonial film-related things. And these two, Metal Ark people, Adnan Verk and David Sampson, who talk movies around here, are really upset that they're not at that foo foo Scorsese nine-minute ovation con film <laughs> festival <laughs> yachts rich people thing. Uh, Samson, start us off here before we get you to arguing about things. Uh, what are you upset about that the employees that you specifically aren't at con? I just think it makes sense if we're going to be a billion-dollar company that we have to look as though we are already. Fake it till you make it. And having Adnan and I not there on the red carpet in con giving you content is just wasted opportunity. Me too. So I, I think the same thing about the Oscars. I think if we're going to do it, let's do it right. And maybe that's just a, uh, a, a symptom of what's going on at Metal Arc. Adnan, we failed you here. You expected to be there this year? Yeah, Dan, listen, the animus between me and David is real, but we are completely aligned on this perspective. In this instance, two is better than one. He and I on the Champs-Élysées eating escargot, arguing about Scorsese's... It's not the Champs-Élysées. It's the Quasette. Yeah. The Champs-Élysées is in Paris. Okay. <laughs> listen, we could go there first, Samson. Then we would saunter down I don't to want to go to Paris with you. Okay. We make it a European vacation. But you're not helping our cause by not even knowing where we're supposed to be. <laughs> we'll wind up where to you go. to Dubuque for the Oscars. <laughs> That's what we'll do. All right, so Adnan wants a trip to Paris where films won't be being made uh, while David will be at con. Very good, a grift. <laughs> I gotta be honest, surprised by the grifter in this particular scenario between the two of you that you would be the worst of these, Adnan. But let's start with what is happening. A nine minute ovation for Scorsese for uh, his next movie here. What did you guys have the most longing about, Samson? Uh, that you missed this year? I just like the idea of being able to see things early. I've always been jealous of the people who got the tapes right early for the Oscars, the people who were part of SAG-AFTRA. And the thing about Khan is it's some of the best movies of the year. And this is, to me, the beginning of the year, the beginning of award season. And the Palm d'Or is a very prestigious award. It's what you get when you win, basically, the Cannes Film Festival. And if you look back over the history of this festival, some of the best movies ever have won this award. And they preview some future movies, which is what's coming out on Apple, but later this year, the Scorsese movie. And Adnan not being there, in this one case, I'm happy because I'm worried that he would have embarrassed us with Scorsese and he would have done like a 13 minute standing ovation. He would have been the only guy clapping when you know it's supposed to be the time to sit down. Listen, one thing about me and Marty is we can see eye to eye. So there's nothing wrong with the 13 minute standing ovation. No, I ovation. see <laughs> eye to eye with him, not you. But the bottom line is this, this film is a masterpiece. I already know it, I haven't even seen it. You to David's point, I'm a part of the Broadcast Film Critics Association. So I get links sent to me, I get DVDs sent to me. It's always a special occasion to be able to see this movie before everybody else. And specifically in the case of The Irishman, to David's point, New York Film Festival, this is the premiere in this country. I was at the first ever showing where Marty was there, De Niro was there, Pesci was there, incredible. And you know what? I went back and saw it again. I saw it Friday night at the premiere, then Saturday took my wife and said, you gotta go see this. I saw The Irishman three times in theaters, and he's right, seeing a film before it's unveiled to the public is just a magical feeling. I can't imagine being there for Killers of the Flower Moon. Again, I've read the book. It's about the murder of the Osage Indians. It's getting rave reviews. De Niro, 10th collaboration with Marty. DiCaprio, 6th collaboration with Scorsese. If me and David were there, we would just be exploding with joy. It would have been incredible. And now my concern is that if we actually were there on the red carpet, that Metal Arc would not get it together enough to get us tickets inside. <laughs> so we'd actually be standing there outside and still not get to see the movies. Hold on. Uh, before we get to what you guys are arguing about today, Mike Ryan, on his face, I read a reaction that uh, begs a follow-up <laughs> question from me. Uh, Adnan, who the hell watches The Irishman? No. Who has nine hours in a week to watch uh, a poor CGI of Robert De Niro no. kicking no, somebody as an 80-year-old gangster? This is the problem, Dave. People point out one scene, one flawed scene, which I will agree with you, does not look particularly realistic. And they take away the fact this is an epic film about, you know, crime and friendship and loyalty and betrayal. And it's beautifully wrought. People point out one scene, which I will agree with you. That scene probably should have been excised from the final cut. 
But it, it's an incredible film and it's a sad film and it's a big, bold film. And I'm telling you, seeing it in a theater, it was deprived being watched on Netflix. Because what you did is you watched 20 minutes and went, oh, that's kind of slow. Let me go make myself a sandwich. Another half an hour. Let me go check what's on Twitter. A movie like The Irishman has to be seen in one sitting. Therefore, you can appreciate its greatness. What are you shaking your head about, Samson? It's just so tracks the way Adnan is. The Irishman is maybe one of Scorsese's worst movies. There's no one who appreciated it. It looked terrible. No, the story that's not was true. unrealistic. He's right. It reminded me of just an old guy trying to be relevant, which is why I'm so fascinated by this nine minute standing ovation, because it's as though it's a comeback for him, and that may be the reason for the ovation. Ten Oscar nominations for The Irishman. Everyone agrees it is a unanimously great bookend to a director who's given us some of the greatest films ever about organized crime, Goodfellas Casino, and now with The Irishman, in which he realizes he's not, he's de-glamorizing this environment. Hey, I've given you all these great mob movies, but this is the reality. This is the cold, hard truth. And you're telling me that's one of his worst, that is a ridiculous take. The Irishman got 10 Oscar nominations. It was up for Best Picture, Best Director, and you're telling me it's one of his worst movies? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Thank God there were 10 slots, Adnan. <laughs> uh, Samson, you have a very bad ally. Stugatz agrees with you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a boring movie. It's certainly not one of his best movies. I'll say that. I agree with David. It was a check your phone 50 time movie. Yes. So. Uh, put Again, it on that's why if you're in a theater, you can't check your phone. You're getting shushed by ushers. You need to be away from your phone. You need to be focused on the screen. Ushers. That's Where are there ushers in movie theaters? Uh, put it Where? On the Nowhere. <laughs> put it on the poll. Are there still ushers anywhere in movie Talking theaters? <laughs> and uh, is The Irishman as well at Lebetard Show a check your phone 50 times movie? Uh, Samson, no. you pronounced something here. You called it the Palm Door. I don't know how it's pronounced. Is it Palm Dior? I don't know the no, pronunciation. No. Palm Door. Samson got it right. Okay, so the Palm Door is, uh, you guys want to do top five all-time Palm Door movies, which is the, the best picture from that year at Cannes, correct? Which is different correct. than the Oscars. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's different. No, but how is Oscars. it different? But how is it different? Because people well, think. Well, it's not the Oscars. No, no I, I mean, get it's it, not but. the Sa Oscars. Yes, but Samson, people. Good point, Stu. Thank you. Uh, thank you both. People <laughs> nationally and internationally think of the Oscar as the award you want to win. The Palm Door means what? Help me understand what it means and how it's different from the Oscars. It's prestige. Winning the Oscar is the number one most prestigious thing you can get, the second is the Palm Door. Golden Globe is way down there and winning the other film festivals, it's cool, it's nice. Audience awards, that's always good. But the Palm d'Or at Cannes is second to the Oscars, in my opinion. Who determines? I agree, but let's, let's not disparage the Audience Award at the Toronto International Film Festival. Normally that winner is a harbinger of who's going to win the Best Picture Oscar. Whoever wins the Toronto Audience Award generally gets nominated for Best Picture of the Oscars. If you win the Palm d'Or, that's not a guarantee you'll get nominated for an Oscar. Go ahead, Stu. Who determines who wins this award? It's a jury. a jury. So generally, it's a yeah, it's a 12, 13 person jury, and it's somebody rather esteemed who's leading the jury. Somebody like you know Tilda Swinton, someone like that. David Sampson, let's do it. Your top five, and I want to just bang through them and then get Adnan's overall objections. So just give me the entire top five without interruption. Huh. Number five, uh, best Palme d'Or movie of all time is <laughs> 1982, a movie called Missing, about someone who went oh. missing in Chile. A true story with John Shea and. Jack Lemmon and Sissy Spacek nominated for Best Picture. It changed the way I view the world. Missing, 1982. I was 14 years old. Number, Number four, four. A three-hour movie that is in my top 100 list called Blue is the Warmest Color. It wow. won the Palm Door in 2013, and it is about two, a, a relationship between two women. It is one of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen in my life. Number three. Number three is The Pianist, which got a Best Actor for Adrian Brody. It is about a musician, a pianist, during the Holocaust. It is a torturous movie that is as difficult to watch as it is perfect to watch. Mm. Number two, uh, Amin, by the way, is here in the, in the midst of a nine-minute standing ovation that he's doing that is only annoying and distracting, not clever or funny. Just <laughs> annoying and distracting. Number two, Samson. 
Number two is Titan, a movie that not enough people saw. It won in 2021 about a woman who has some sort of metal in her brain and what it does to her. I found this to be fascinating. I reviewed it well on Nothing Personal, but no one saw it. You reviewed it well? And the best Palme d'Or winner <laughs> of all time happened way back in 1994. Quentin Tarantino, Pulp Fiction is my number one. Uh, Adnan is shaking his head vigorously. The floor is yours, Adnan. How bad is that list? How good is that list? Uh, Dan, of course it's a horrible list. I mean, Missing is features two really good performances by Jack Lemmon and Sissy Spacek, but it's dry and bland, and the final half an hour gets bogged down, and nobody's re-watching Missing in the last 40 years. It's one of his favorite movies ever. That's a cry for help. Uh, Blue is the warmest color. I'm not going to argue with a three-hour film about lesbians, particularly a very explicit lesbian sequence. We'll give them that one. The Penis is one of the most overrated movies in the last 25 years. Brody won an Oscar in a year that Daniel Day-Lewis should have won it for Gangs of New York. He was unbelievable in that movie, and Brody wins the Oscar, and I go, that movie was not perfect. That was bogged down by poor pacing. Polanski wins an Oscar when he really should have won for Chinatown. That was the classic make-good Oscar for movies you've done in the past. The Penis is not a film. Nobody wants to rewatch. It's nothing special, trust me. Titan, those were going to save my venom. Dan, Stu, I mean, this is a movie in which a woman is impregnated by a car. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> a woman is impregnated by a car, and there's a car baby in the movie. There's also stabbing characters in the ear, the head with a hairpin. It's a ridiculous movie. Sometimes Can does this. They go, you know what? Let's just get a crazy art film and give it the palm door. That's Titan, and Samson fell for it. Sounds ridiculous great. choice. Car baby. Pulp Fiction is great. No objections at number one. <laughs> a car baby. <laughs> we'll get your rebuttal in a second to the car, baby. I think it's good criticism. And then what is your top five list so that David can uh, destroy that? The much superior top five list, Dan. Number five is Parasite, one of the best films of the last five years. A great look at inequality between the classes. Smart and funny and rich and incredibly memorable. And a movie that really became a sensation when it was released in 2019, all the way to winning Best Picture. Number four is Apocalypse Now. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Robert Duvall, obviously incredible. Martin Sheen, Brando searching for whatever the hell he's doing in the movie. He's not great, let's be honest. But Coppola's vision is just so audacious. As he said, this is not a film about Vietnam. This film is Vietnam. The ride of the Valkyrie sequence, the helicopters, one of the great sequences in modern <laughs> Number movie three, uh, it is number Vietnam. three, Adnan, Adnan, hold on, just number slow down. Adnan, slow down. Take okay. a breath. Slow down. Yeah. Hold on a second. You could catch uh, Adnan's enthusiasms and his passion <laughs> on Cinephile. Uh, just say the movie. Go ahead and say okay. it. Say it. Number three. three is Barton Fink. Now go. You're a professional broadcaster. You have been for many years. You do this very well in sports, but you get carried away with movies. Go ahead. Do it the correct broadcasting way. I just need that cue, Dan. You're right. Number three is Barton Frank. I adore the Coen brothers. This is one of their funniest movies. It's a great satire about the creative process, and I think it's one of the funniest movies they've ever made. John Turturro won the best actor at the Cannes Film Festival, as did the Coen brothers winning best director. Barton Fink is really funny. John Goodman, tremendous. I love that movie. Number two? <laughs> no. Number two is Pulp Fiction. You gotta wait, Dan. <laughs> This is Every a disaster. <laughs> Everything Sam has said. Number two, Pulp Fiction. Number one. <laughs> Needle of the heart. Number one is Taste of Cherry. The great Iranian filmmaker, Abbas Kiristami. I love this movie. Taste of Cherry came out in 1997. It's been a man looking for a way to die. It really began the great Iranian new wave of those films coming out in the late 90s. If you love Persian cinema, you know Kiristami. Taste of Cherry, an incredible film. Uh, I was a movie usher, actually, when this movie came out in 1997 <laughs> at the Carlton Cinemas in downtown Toronto. And I would rip the ticket and go, Taste Cherry, you're going to watch one of the best movies of the year. I was so excited. Samson, Number one. Samson, you, uh, for those just listening on audio that don't have the video, Samson's reaction to that number one was to fall back in his baseball glove chair and physically hold his stomach as if he was trying to keep from throwing up in laughter. <laughs> I just, when he said, if you know anything about Persian cinema... So the answer is no, I don't know anything about Persian cinema, and I'm perfectly fine with that. No, and that's your, your lists, loss. Week yeah. after week, Adnan, and what I love about your lists is that I can almost predict them. You can predict Taste of Cherry. Taste of Cherry at number one is your <laughs> prediction. That's ridiculous. I'm perfectly happy for you to put your personal touch on your top five list. I'm fine with it, but again, 
I don't understand why you have to say that if you don't want to watch a movie a second time, it yeah. means it's not good. Rewatchability so is a big thing, David. You know that. If you love a movie, you can see it time and time again. Your movies, you watch it once, you discard them. Just like the car baby in Titan. There's How many no times have you seen Parasite? How I've many seen, times have you seen Parasite? I've seen it three times. I loved it. You so I, I, no one's seen Parasite three times. <laughs> I got to take a lie detector test now. <laughs> Wait a minute, David. What has he ever done? David, how many times have you seen Let It Ride? Give me a number. 97. I just watched it two weeks ago. It's still doing fine. And But that's a comedy. Comedies you can watch over and over again. Parasite is not a comedy. How many people go to the theater and watch Apocalypse Now twice? I'm telling you right now, that's Your an all-time classic. You can't silly. criticize Apocalypse Now, Samson. You're reaching right now. You no, I'm not. I, I'm not criticizing. What I'm asking you is why it matters. Your criticism of my list is that there's no rewatchability. No, his criticism was a car baby, enough. which was which I he think, wins. Valid yes. car baby. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, thank you. Appreciate your time. Nothing personal with David Sampson. He reviews a movie every day. He watches a movie every day. And Cinephile, where Adnan Berg, it's hard sometimes to get him to slow down because he is very enthusiastic about the movies, very passionate about the sculpting and filmmaking and the art in it. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> thank you, guys. See you, guys.